So the subject five, uh, did you know, is chemical storage tanks. Now, we use storage tanks of all kinds, mild steel, poly tank, and uh, they need maintenance. They need to be checked, but uh, again, uh, uh, steel tanks will corrode, mild steel tanks, and poly tanks will break down from sunlight. As you're seeing here, the tank is collapsed. That's the uh, third tank from the left, and it released its fertilizer. So this is an example here of a tank that started all of this that had um, basically exploded and released uh, 2,500 gallons worth of um, fertilizer on the ground. And there is a lot of strength here. It threw a lot of the plastic all over the place. Uh, and again, that's, that's the spill. So... I wanted to show you how brittle this tank was by this bat and so I'm working with the farmer here and we went out to the tank and what you're going to observe is how brittle the tank is and so what happens is the sunlight breaks it down and the tank is no longer flexible and so you could see it here when I hit it it should bounce instead it's going to to break and shatter Now there is an easy pen test that, that we use. Um, okay. So did you know that poly and steel tanks have a limited uh, time frame? They don't last forever. And so uh, in the publication that you see listed here uh, are uh, discussions about these tanks, how to look at those numbers, and how to take a tank out of service. Did you know subject six is on fuel tanks? Uh, fuel tanks are probably one of the most neglected uh, areas on any farm, actually many, many businesses. And so we have fuel tanks, we let them rust. These are just like the mild steel tanks that we see anywhere else. And you can see here these uh, needed to have been sanded and repainted. One of the things about fuel is it doesn't take much that gets into water to contaminate millions of gallons. And that's the, the, the problem with, one of the problems with fuel. So if you looked at this particular slide, look on the left-hand tank. What do you notice about how that tank is sitting? Can you see where it's sitting on the edge and why we're asking for problems for not fixing it? Do you see the issue here, having a fuel tank next to a water body? Okay. That is an issue uh, it's a, it's, it, and can be an ex ex extreme problem. This is why many, many people uh, are going to double-walled tanks. And so we have a choice, depending on the price, to use a single wall. In this case, it's a double-walled tank that gives us extra protection when we have areas that we really want to protect. We're seeing more and more uh, uh, growers uh, being able to place roofs over their fuel tanks. Because one of the things that many people just find discouraging is having to deal with rainwater getting into the fuel dike and then getting mixed with, uh, with the fuel that's there. And that could be true with chemicals too. So on this particular one, you can see what they've done. They've built this uh, basically a little building. They still have access to basically move the rain away from it from the tanks. Uh, here is another example where we can keep uh, pretty much the inside pad where these things are being stored clean and not having to worry about what do we do with the water that's got fuel in it. We like to keep these tanks uh, marked specifically for what they are. Um, as you can see on this one here, if you look almost right above the no smoking, you can actually see that there is, this is a diesel tank. And if you've ever made that mistake, you only make it once where you put diesel in a gas engine or gas in a diesel. Uh, and what I really liked on this particular picture here, on the upper left, can you see the yellow and the blue dots? So what they've done here, look at the yellow, and you could see the fuel on that, that, that uh, mower right there. And if you looked at where the, uh, you looked at where the yellow fuel, where the, the cap is on, you notice they've got it matched yellow. On the right with the blue, you'll notice the, bu the blue uh, uh, lid to the fuel. So what they're trying to do is to prevent people from actually uh, putting the wrong fuel in the wrong piece of equipment. Now I want to go back here about placement. Uh, we have choices on most farms where we put things 
And if obviously we need for fuel, you're going to have these larger fuel trucks come in. Um, they need room to maneuver to get around. But this is an example here when something bad goes bad because of placement. Notice here the wood is rotten. This was a tank that was above uh, on top, gravity fed, um, and the wood rotted and it fell. Instead of falling into the creek, which the creek belongs to the state, instead of falling into the creek, it fell the other way onto the farmer's property. If this had fallen into the creek and ruptured like it did on the land, you would be looking at some significant environmental problems, fines, and, and all kind of issues that you would rather not deal with. So the idea here is, is to really look at where you're putting your fuel tanks. Obviously, it's got to be where you can have access to them, um, uh, but also we're really trying to protect the water sources. Many people will dike up their fuel tanks, as you can see here, and I hope you can take a look at this and notice what the problems are or the main problem. And the main problem is I've got containment, but the hoses are outside of that containment. We ought to be putting the hoses back in. Um, here is, uh, again, take a look at it, and if you could see kind of what they're trying to do. Um, from this angle here, you don't see any water sources. You see flat ground. You see an easy access for a fuel truck to come in. But what they're trying to do is to protect the tanks with, if you can see the poles sticking up, and you see this at service stations and elsewhere as well. And what they're trying to do is protect the tanks from tractors, trucks, uh, vehicles, and other things from hitting them and basically rupturing the tanks. So more of preventing this context, people have done different things. Um, you can see here how they're trying to protect the tanks and you have to uh, admire people who make this effort to try to protect their property and their investment in the fuel as well. These hoses that we use, and so whether um, when they're left outside like it is on this gravel, uh, can you notice here that this hose has got some issues? And all hoses are rubber, they're moist. When these hoses begin to dry out or they rub, you will get these, these break points in them. And from a uh, safety uh, perspective, not a good thing to have all of this investment in fuel containment, and yet my hose is going to be the weak link. So we're all the time looking at hoses to make sure that they too are not degrading by sunlight like we saw on the poly tanks. So, did you know that fuel tanks require attention? Uh, many people don't. Uh, we have a publication that you see listed here that's going to help you to better understand the subject of fuel tanks and how to take care of them and how to mark them.